dear students very good morning so uh, i first of all i welcome you all to this uh, prestigious institution bishopriya college in the uh, uh, we, we can't i mean meet in the physical classrooms we are happy about this google platform where at least we can have uh, few classes right in the uh, uh this college is you are privileged actually to be the librarians and uh, uh, this college is also reported as beauty bishop uh, if you happen to come to college you will understand that the same is true and i'm so happy to address you about the allied subject right so let me share my screen so that i will give you a short orientation in the allied paper book in the moon about the light paper i mean the title of the light paper the title is social history of india and that is the light paper which we are going to have for first semester so let me show uh, share my screen so that i will give you uh, an introduction to this paper social history of india is going to be paper which you have as you are allied in the first ma'am your voice is not so audible ma'am yeah let me speak louder okay so kindly tell me if my voice is clear and it's audible do you hear me now is it okay now and your voice is not clear ma'am okay just wait can you wait for me Yeah, my dear students, is it okay now? Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so the title of the paper, the light paper, is social history of India. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so uh, the first of all, I welcome you to the Ute Bishop, and I am Dr. Ruth from the Department of English. definitely can tell you that you are privileged to be the librarians and especially to study english literature in bishop keeper right and so as a english literature student what you are going to study in the allied paper or, or as a english literature student generally what you are going to study for these three years the first year second year and third year what you are going to study actually so one side we will be studying literature on the other side you will be improving in your communication skills yeah you are going to study literature on side where is the other side you will be picking up maybe you will be improving your language your communication skills both speaking as well as writing so it's up to you to use the platform uh, rightly and to improvise yourself in this kind of communication skills and also to in, i mean to develop your knowledge in your main program that is english literature okay and as a literature student you study after all for pleasure okay this is a kind of a pleasure study i can tell you for example if you take a science student or a math student they they study will be a little more serious Uh, when we speak about this english literature so literature where you will be having poem uh, as well as drama or fiction for the matter like you will be studying something that gives you pleasure okay you will be definitely enjoying the scores and uh, along with this pleasure or enjoyment definitely this scores will help you to get progress towards your nearing future 
So after completing uh, my graduation, maybe you will be going for your higher studies post graduation. Thereafter, definitely you will be placed in good jobs, no doubt in that. Okay. So even in your final year itself, you will, you will be having so many campus drives. We should be your campus drives where you will be facing interviews and uh, I'm happy to tell you that many of our students, your seniors, they got selected in so many campus drives. So, yes, I mean, in, in, in the final year itself, before even completing your uh, course, many of you uh, will be getting your jobs. So what I want to tell you is like, as a literature student, you are uh, privileged, okay? A double delight this course is going to be. Okay, this is not going to be a very, uh, very difficult uh, or very serious uh, stuff. This is going to be uh, like, you will be definitely enjoying your studies. So keep that in mind. So uh, studies as well as picking up your communicative skills, both should take up simultaneously throughout this three years. Okay, and uh, the next aspect is to talk about this allied paper. What is that called an allied paper? Why it is called an allied paper? What do you mean with the word allied? So allied paper is nothing but the related subject to the main paper. So I hope you would have completed uh, the, uh, I mean, the two orientations on the major papers, right? Chiba ma'am, as well as Jeeva ma'am, they would have told about, they would have given an idea about the major papers. Okay, in every semester, you have like part one paper where you have uh, Tamil or Sanskrit or Hindi or French, uh, which you prefer. And in every semester, you have part two English, it's common for all, okay, uh, all the science students, mathematics, or art students, all the students will be studying the paper. And this part three comprises of the major paper as well as the allied paper. And uh, to come to our course, English literature, uh, this allied paper, especially this first semester, you have your allied paper, what's your allied paper? Social History of England. Social History of England is the title of your allied paper. So this paper definitely will help you to get high marks. How? See, this paper is full of history. History is nothing but full of facts, information. And if you are going to start out with this, with the information, if you are going to get cut out with a uh, textbook, definitely you can expect more than 90 marks in this paper. But that is not going to be the case in the prose paper or writer paper because those are uh, some literature paper where you are expected to write uh, critically. Okay, you are uh, uh, you have to approach a piece uh, with a critical eye. Critical appreciation uh, will be expected there. Okay, but when you come to this paper, a light paper, uh, Social History of England, this book is uh, a small book and uh, it gives the outline of the history of England. And if you are going to get cut out with this, definitely you will get more than 90 marks. Okay, so if you get maybe the maximum marks, more than 90, uh, your percentage will get increased. Okay. So, uh, in literature, maybe getting 75 or the uh, distinction is again a very great thing. But if you concentrate papers like this, the history papers, okay, if this helps you to get maybe the uh, maximum percentage, good percentage. Huh? So, you can, uh, if you work hard, you will be getting what? 90 marks out of 100, about 90 out of 100. And uh, this paper, a light paper, social history of England, it helps to understand the major paper. Okay, so in prose, you will be having uh, many uh, fine prose writers, and in poetry, you will be having so many uh, fine poets. So, how to understand a poem or how to understand a prose? So, we are supposed to know about the background details, right? So, we, so we are supposed to know about maybe the country from which they come, writer, uh, I mean, has come, and about maybe the uh, backdrop of the particular country. So all those things we are supposed to do. So I can tell you that this is the paper, the foundation paper, where you come to understand, okay, the entire, I mean, outline about England and about the writers, so that that makes you to understand your major paper in a proper way. 
Okay. So uh, this paper, Social History of England, it gives a multi-dimensional view about England. Okay. England. About England, you can uh, you get what multi-dimensional view. The author is providing maybe all the important details in that outline. And this book is also a simple book. Uh, that's why I'm advising you, you all to sit and study every day. Okay, you have to give maybe proper time to study this book and when you sit for your examinations definitely you will be getting very good marks okay so moving to the next aspect where uh, in the first year this is the first year you know so in the first year you have two allied papers and in this semester the first allied paper is social history of england and in the second semester okay in the same year first year second semester what is the allied paper history of English literature. So I want you to think about the role of history here. Okay, History coming in literature. So this is how maybe the structure, the syllabus, it was, I mean, it is framed and this helps why, why actually we have this history even in the first semester. Because unless until you know about the historical details of that particular country, you cannot understand the works that are prescribed for you. So what are the allied papers you have in the first semester? This semester, we are going to study what? Social history of England. And the next semester, we are going to study what? History of English literature. So we come to know that the first semester, it's about the nation, whereas in the second semester, it is about the writers, English literature. It talks about, it is going to give us all the details, maybe but the maximum details about the writers, the important writers, minor writers for that matter. Okay, all those things we will be studying in the second semester. And moving to the next aspect, where yeah, I want to tell you about the connectivity between literature and history. Okay, so see, you have a separate course BA history, right? You have a separate book tab called BA history. But as a literature student, we study history here. We have a light paper in history. Why? Because this is not maybe a general history, but here, as a literature student, here you study the history of England. After all, we, are, we belong to what? English literature. We belong to, I mean, we study English literature. So that's why uh, you, we, uh, we must know, we must know the history of the nation. Okay, so one side literature, the other side history, and this side you have arts. What's an art? Maybe in literature, what will, will you be getting? Uh, in literature, you have all the finest writings like uh, poetry, uh, prose, drama, short stories, novels. Okay, so all those things uh, come in literature side. And when you come to history, history talks about mere facts, okay, raw facts. History actually give the, uh, I mean, past uh, facts, okay, whatever has happened, it will be told in history, fine. So this side, literature side, we read about works and writers. Whereas when you come to history, we talk about era and events, okay. What is an era? It's period, nothing but a particular period. Okay, so this is intertwined. Literature and history, it's almost intertwined. So we have to study history, the historical backdrop, and that helps us to come with a better understanding about the work we read, the poem we read, maybe the drama we study. So this is how the literature, the history plays a vital role uh, to get, I mean, to study English, I mean, any literature for that matter in an effective way. Okay, then moving to the next thing. Yeah, so English literature is, of course, a foreign literature to all of us. We are not the natives, so this is a new literature to us. English is, of course, a new language, a foreign language to us. Uh, so, this particular book, I mean, this particular semester, this book, Social History of England, it aims to provide historical details about the foreign land England as well as the geographical details to some extent. Okay, so we uh, must know where actually England 
uh, is situated, right? So we have to know uh, the geographical structure of this nation, and uh, we also we are supposed to know about the historical progress of this land. Okay? So this is how this is how we are going to study this book, Social History of England. Fine. And moving to the next aspect. Uh, yeah. So this is again a, I mean, a very famous uh, title or famous um, I mean, name associated with that particular land. Yeah, we used to tell what the great. You see the adjective there. The word great is given to this land. So why it is called the so? Okay. So we. Uh, very well, I mean the Indians we know the greatness of Britain in terms of in terms of what colonial I mean, uh, colonies, right? So we were actually under the rule of Britishes till to the mid of 20th century, right? But we uh, happen to read the history about the freedom struggle, right? How our great leaders they fought for the freedom, non-violence in the third the arms, etc. etc. So this particular title relating to this nation, the Great Britain, definitely um, makes us to understand the greatness. Okay, so the people, the natives in England, they proudly used to tell what sun never sets in the British Empire. Okay, this is again a famous saying. They used to tell the natives in England. They used to tell sun never sets in the British Empire. Why? all this uh, land when you look at the map i mean world map this nation will be very small a small nation england will be a small country uh, if you look at the map you can now uh, see that but this small country okay right from the 16th century into the middle of the 20th century this small country ruled almost all the big nations okay it, it, this is uh, again interesting to Think about, to know about, right? So, sun never sets in the British Empire is a very famous uh, saying, and uh, the, these people, the natives, they used to proudly tell this uh, statement. And to understand the statement, it is necessary for us to study the history. Okay, so whatever, whatever we, 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 we discuss now, everything must be related with the life paper that is prescribed for you, the social history of England. Okay, I want to make you understand how history plays a vital role to, to, to study, to understand this entire program, the English literature. So, some of the such in British Empire is a very famous saying I told you, and this nation is a superpower nation. Okay, England is considered to be the superpower nation, right? Until to the 20th century, mid of 20th century, this nation is a superpower nation. And uh, when coming to this language side, talking about maybe the language English, again it's interesting to 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 understand that English is an international language, and especially in India, uh, this is almost the official language, and uh, this is also the academic language, right? And we talk about English medium schools, parents, elders, they are very much concerned to put their kids where in English medium schools, right? Why? Um, I mean, though we like it or not, we are supposed to know English. Okay? So this is a medium of instruction. In India, maybe higher in a higher education level, if you talk about the professional courses or they were uh, uh, arts and science courses, where the medium of instruction is only in English. So just think about how this land, a small land, it has come to this uh, maybe greater levels. Okay, and this is actually a job-oriented language. It moves no doubt in that when you go to your final year, third year, you will have you will be having so many campus drives, interviews, and where you will be tested in uh, your personality development as well as in. Uh, communicative skills, communication skills. Okay, these two uh, skills, I mean, these two aspects are very important in uh, all the interviews too. So they will be checking whether you are going to be a science student or art student or uh, you belong to mathematics, whatever, you are expected to have what? Good communication skills. 
both in speaking as well as in writing, you are uh, expected to come up with uh, good English. Okay, so this is how this Great Britain, as a country, it ruled, right? It ruled around 400 years or so, the, almost all the nations. And because of this, okay, because of this 400 years of rule, what has happened? Uh, this uh, language, English language, has influenced almost all the nations, okay? We still we can feel influence of the Britishes, right? We still talk about maybe the impact of the people, I mean the Britishes, the British rule. And we still, we have, uh, we know the importance of knowing English, okay, knowing English. So all these things, how we are able to talk about maybe all these things, only to history. Okay. If unless until we know history, you can't look at the greatness of Britain, or you can't maybe uh, talk about maybe the impact of English language. How uh, this has become uh, this much? I mean, this has uh, impacted our India this much. So history, social history of England is going to be the base foundation for you to move forward, move forward in the entire. I did close. And uh, moving to the next one, why so? Why so in the sense, why this Britain is called the Great Britain? Why English has become maybe the official language, academic language, the international language, uh, medium of instruction? Why so? So uh, the answers, you can uh, find the answers in history. So you have to go to the early times and you have to analyze or you have to study maybe how England has grown this much. Okay, so after all, literary works mirror history. Yeah, we talk about Shakespeare, we talk about words, we talk about maybe um, whoever, okay, Jawala Nehru comes to India, whoever the writer is going to be, every work mirror history. Every work reflect the particular age. So you associate maybe Shakespeare in uh, like uh, Shakespeare he belongs to 16th century and uh, you talk about maybe the age, the, the period, the backdrop there, how it impacted the writer, how Shakespeare he was influenced by his own uh, uh, I mean, uh, age, period. So every work reflect a particular period and it is a must for a literature student to study the history of England. And uh, without knowing history, definitely you can't understand the work. See, for example, if you take a, a science student, if you uh, give a poem to them, if you ask them to read, they will be reading the poem, enjoying the poem, they will be telling about maybe the, uh, the, the uh, critical uh, uh, aspects of the uh, poem. Yeah, it's funny. But as a literature student, you should, uh, I mean, you should take one step ahead. Okay. It's not maybe simply reading a poem or a prose or a novel and just maybe uh, talking about maybe the uh, merits and demerits of that, but it's a matter of like understanding the multi dimensional view of that particular piece. Okay, so that's why knowing history of England is very important uh, for you. And moving to the next uh, thing, and the way we have historians, okay. Historians are not are talking about maybe the general historians. You have so many historians, right? Uh, the history department is a separate discipline. If you go, if you go there, you can uh, see maybe, I mean, quite a number of books in history, as history, right? Historians are there. But maybe in this particular uh, I mean, uh, slide, I have given the historians who wrote about England's history, English writers' history. Okay, so David Chabani is a very famous historian, and uh, he has come up with a very elaborated um, uh, details uh, in about the history of English literature. Okay, so, that is the first person, David And the second one is Hudson. 
Hudson is the book described for you. Hudson has written this history of English literature. Okay, this history of English literature. And this history of English literature is the book which you are going to have to read the second semester. The history of the second semester. And Hudson is the book of the child. So, we are speaking about the book of the book of the history of English writers and the nation. And uh, the third historian is Dr. Chakashu. And this uh, author is described for you, for you in this current semester. Okay. So in this semester, uh, you will create a social stream of England. The author of the book is Dr. Chakashu. So we are going to study uh, the views, the history, the center by Dr. Chakashu. Again, my voice is not clear. So far, is it okay? How long it was not clear? For the past so uh, three minutes, ma'am. I'm at breaking, ma'am. My voice is breaking, ma'am. Your voice is not clear, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Your voice is not clear. Ma'am, you can go ahead, ma'am. It was breaking in between. Now it's all right, ma'am. You go ahead, ma'am. Okay, let me continue. Let me try my very best. Please speak uh, louder. Yeah. So, this particular uh, slide, I, I have given you the writers, I mean the historians who wrote histories about England and its literature. Okay, and uh, we do the next one. The social history of England. Social history of England. The exact paper, the prescribed paper for us in the semester. So, uh, uh, social history of England by Patmaja Ashok is the book which we are going to study. Right. And uh, see, in this particular book, you have the three dimensional history. So whenever you talk about England's history, England's history is in three dimension. Okay? Three dimensional history. And what are the three dimensions? So England's history, it has social dimension, comes as number one. And the second dimension is political dimension. And the third one is religious dimension. Okay? I hope you are following me. So, three-dimensional history, uh, uh, I mean, it was, it is described by Patmaja Ashu. Uh, not only this writer, if you take any, I mean, historian who talks about England's history, a particular historian will be talking about history of England in three dimensions. What are the three dimensions? Social dimension, political dimension, and religious dimension. Let me move to the next uh, screen where I have given some ideas about this, uh, I mean, uh, social dimension, political dimension, and the religious dimension. Yeah? So, to talk about the first one, social dimension, okay? To talk about the first one, social dimension, what it actually means. Social is nothing but society. Society is, of course, the people. Right? So this dimension we talk it describes about the people of England. Okay, uh, to to sell, I mean uh, to tell it in a simple sentence, this particular dimension, social dimension, it talks about the people, the society of England. And uh, if, uh, right from the early times, okay, right from the early days. If you read the societal, I mean the um, social dimension, uh, dimensional history of England, we come to know, we come to know about the early inhabitants of England and about the emergence of classes. Okay, what do you mean by classes, class distinction? So in history, at the point, people 
come uh, with the idea of this kind of various classes, class distinctions. So we have, I mean, in history, they tell about the lower class, maybe the middle class, upper class, uh, aristocratic class, and one side you have, uh, maybe the other side you have what? Uh, ruling class, okay? And uh, you talk about this um, landlords, okay? landowners, the ruling class, and we have the slaves, slave trade. So when you read the history of Bhutan, you come to know about the emergence of class distinctions. So this is again something not good. Class distinction. I mean, class distinction is not good. Of course, if you read the history of England, you can uh, see how the poor class, uh, how the poor class, they suffer, 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 ongoing suffering. Right. So this is how, in social dimension, we study about the emergence of classes, distinctions, I mean class distinctions, etc. And the next important aspect in social dimension is about the culture. So if you are a literature student, you must know about the culture of India, because you read what? English literature. We talk about maybe two drop. Uh, always these westerners, western culture is considered to be the pioneers. Okay, uh, we used to look uh, look at I mean from them and we used to pick up uh, maybe some ideas or uh, whatever, fashion or whatever from them the westerners. So we talk about the cultures, cultures, different cultures. Okay, so in the social history of England. And you have the idea about the culture. I mean, uh, when you read maybe the all the chapters, you can understand maybe how uh, the culture of that England people's culture. And uh, the uh, next important point is about revolutions. Okay, and yeah, uh, the sudden good changes that have happened in the society. Okay, uh, French Revolution. So we, we talk about very, uh, I mean, uh, some important historical revolutions, you know, in the world's history. So in England's history, you will be coming across some important historical revolutions. So those revolutions brought maybe some good changes, I mean, improvements, developments in the society. People, they have improved because of uh, these, I mean, revolutions. The lifestyle has got changed. So uh, this is also an aspect in social dimension. And uh, the next aspect is natural calamities, natural disasters. Like uh, when you read the history of England, you come to know about the plague, okay, the disease. So in those days, early days, there is no, uh, I mean, uh, medicine, uh, I mean, treatment, uh, uh, sort of uh, any medical aids. In those days, uh, there were no such things. So people they die as masks, they mask it. So uh, in social dimension, uh, the author, uh, historian, will be sharing about maybe the natural disasters uh, which were undergone by the. Uh, People. Okay, so the next aspect is trade. Trade is again a very important word in the social history of England because only through this England has become the super nation. I hope you all agree with me. We tend to understand it, but study history, you know, right? So uh, when you see the history through this uh, trade, England was establishing colonies. England was coming to probably all the countries, um, especially in India, we have the East India Company. We have the East India Company and this East India Company, it came and slowly and steadily, it was captivating maybe the, uh, I mean, things and their, uh, after that they have captivated major uh, I mean, kingdoms. So this is how we know the history about uh, this British rule, right? So the trade is again a very important word when you talk about the social history of England, especially in social dimension. Okay, and uh, moving to the next one, we also will get, uh, I mean, information about the inventions, uh, scientific inventions, okay? scientific inventions, which helped the people to change their lifestyle in a bit. So 
so finally, the social dimension, to make it simple, this talks about the, I mean, the uh, development in the life of the people, okay? How the people have developed or what are the, uh, I mean, how they have um, uh, progressed throughout these ages. And uh, moving to the next one, uh, the second dimension is political dimension. So political dimension. So in social history of England, Daikatuja Ashok, you will be getting the political dimension. As the title uh, says, this talks about politics, simply the politics. And uh, when you read the book, you will be getting to know about the rulers, the chronological order, okay, who's the first king, and after that who came, and after that who came. It was chronologically, it will be described by the author. So about the rulers. Till to 20th century, I hope you all know uh, there is a monarch rule. Okay, there was monarch, uh, I mean, king ruling. Only during the mid of 20th century, we have come to democracy. Now we are in democratic rule. But when you read the history, you can understand that how the king being the supreme power, even the king is considered to be the god. People it's considered Again, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the technical uh, issues. Uh, sorry. Anyway, I'll continue. Yes, ma'am. Is it okay, yes, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. You can continue, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Yeah, in political dimension, as I told you, we will be knowing about the rulers, the kings. Okay, so in chronological order, in a chronological order, and in political dimension, the next the next aspect will be uh, about in nations. So when you read the history, early history of England, you come to know three, uh, I mean, main, uh, uh, I mean, countries. Uh, they have invaded England. They have invaded India. So, uh, for example, when you read this England's history, we come to know uh, the first invasion is from Rome, Roman invasion, okay, and the second one, uh, German invasion, and the third one, Norman invasion. Okay, these countries they have invaded England in the early times, and this impacted the land. See, this uh, English people they ruled us. Around uh, 200 years, we were under the rule of uh, uh, English people, and uh, till today, the impact is there. Right? We, we we all accept, we all agree how we are influenced by, um, like uh, consciously or unconsciously, we are under the impact of the British, um, I mean, system. In the same way, when you read the social history of England, you come to know how England it was invaded. By Romans, by Germans, by uh, Normans, and how these invasions influenced the people, influenced the ruler. So it was much felt, okay, it was much felt, and this is how, in political dimension, we come to know about the different invasions. And the next point is about civil wars. Not only from the outside, England was facing maybe uh, problems. I mean, the rulers, they were facing uh, problems or difficulties. But the rulers, at the point, they uh, faced war, internal war, a cold war. Okay, Internal war in the sense, war between the king, and maybe with his ministers, or war between the king and a group of people. Right? War between the king and the parliament, it's not a, maybe a battlefield or a physical war, it's a kind of a cold war, misunderstandings, and I mean, friendliness. Okay. So, this aspect is very much shown by our writer, I mean, the historians, when they talk about social history of India. So, civil was again a very important aspect to study in social history of India. And the next is about assassinations. Yeah, great leaders, when they are getting murdered, when they are killed, the it is called assassination, right? We don't tell that it's a murder, we, we, we tell that as an assassination. For example, like Abraham Lincoln, he was assassinated. So in that way, there were some assassinations when you read the politics, okay? Some kings, they got 
assassinated from rumors. So this is how it is. And moving to the next point where I want to tell you about the emergence of parliament. So today we have democracy, democratic rule. We all are, almost all the nations, we follow what? Democracy. But in those days, what uh, has actually happened? Uh, you have a king, king as the one and army, and the other side, that emerged parliament. Okay? So this parliament comprises of, definitely of, of uh, who, I mean, uh, the common people. Okay, representatives from the common people. So, final point is about the party system. Yeah, we we'll talk about DMK party and ADMK party in Tamil Nadu, right? So, in those days, early times, how uh, for the first time in the history of England, party system has party system has because we uh, know that king is the only supreme power and uh, he, he will be like uh, sometimes. Uh, it is uh, very sad to know some kings are so self-centered, they will be uh, behaving in a, such a wild way, right? So all those things are happening, they are happening in the history. But here, in political dimension, we come to know uh, that in England, how for the first time, political parties started. And uh, the first political parties are Tories and Whigs. Tories and Whigs. And Tories are the supporters of the king, Whigs are the supporters of the army. So this is how this is how uh, the aspects of this question political dimension. And moving to the next one, religious dimension. So religious dimension, where uh, yeah, where we have yeah. I want to tell you one thing. This is a very important point. Whenever you study the history of England, okay. This, uh, the role of religion, especially the Christianity, okay? it's a Christian country, so the role of Christianity again plays a very important uh, I mean, role here in England system. So religious dimension, see, uh, history uh, in three dimensions, uh, social, okay, after all, without society, you can't even think about anything, without people, you can't even think about uh, language or culture or maybe social society etc so that is the first dimension the second dimension politics yeah of course politics is also an inevitable factor in in our life and see this religion the role of religion okay so in england's history again the role of religion uh, is very very vital so christianity is the uh, i mean uh, it's a christian country and when you uh, study maybe the uh, I mean progression in this field. I mean in this religion, Christianity. We come to know Roman Catholics are the first uh, maybe congregation in Christianity, and people have moved to Protestantism, uh, which was uh, I mean uh, by Martin Luther from Germany. Okay, during uh, Renaissance. During 15th century, Martin Luther was coming out with this Protestantism. Uh, what is this Protestantism after? Yeah, they protest the wrong practices of Roman Catholics. Uh, they protest the wrong uh, practices, I mean, uh, wrong doings of this Roman Catholic priest. Okay, so this is how there was a conflict arising. And uh, moving to England's history, it's again interesting to know this nation, they have come up with their own. Uh, Way of following Christianity. I mean, uh, I mean Christianity. Okay, what is that? It is Church of England. So Church of England is the national religion of what? England, right? And uh, thereafter, maybe after 16th century, you have so many, so many number of uh, congregations emerging in Christianity. So many, so many numbers of congregations are there. But these are some of the really, uh, I mean, Christian congregations you have. And moving to the last slide. I want to tell you about yeah, the author, Patmaja Ashok. So we are going to study this author for this semester, Patmaja Ashok. And uh, see, this author, uh, if this book is prescribed for you, okay, you are supposed to buy the book. It's available in, I mean, online, so you are supposed to buy it. And uh, this book is apparently a very small book. Uh, with uh, the outline, outline of the entire history of the uh, land in England. 
Dr. Ms. Patmadra Ashok is historian. And the, the highlights of the of this book are it is giving charts, okay, where we come to know about maybe the chronological order of the kings or some important uh, events, etc. Uh, about the periods, the ages. So uh, providing charts and uh, maps, okay. It's important for you all to go and take a world map and just find out where England is, maybe about this geographical structure and everything. And the author is providing that also. And the author is also giving what? Glossary, useful glossary, uh, where you come to know maybe the meanings of some new words. And uh, recent history, uh, she will be talking about the early times till to the recent history she has covered in that particular book. So this book will definitely give you the entire outline. And finally, maybe after studying, completing this book in the first semester, I'm sure that you will have a, a view about how the world was uh, looking, I mean, at England and how England, which was responding towards the other neighboring nations or uh, uh, to the world. Okay, yeah, this is where it ends and uh, it's uh, uh, really a good thing to talk to you and uh, to discuss. And let me show the syllabus. Yeah, I think the class teacher will be doing that, uh, giving syllabus as well as the, uh, I mean, the breakup. And I have the uh, PDF format of the book, Patmaja Show, and I'll be sharing that with you in the Google Classroom so that you can have uh, a glance of that. But I advise you um, to buy the book, okay, to buy the book, to get the book. When you come for regular classes, you are supposed to have the textbook. Without having textbook, definitely you won't understand this paper and don't ever miss any of the classes because this is like a, uh, I mean, there will be a logic in, uh, I mean, all the classes. And you should have the consistency in comprehending the text. So don't ever take uh, leave for any of the classes. Uh, please use your platform in the right way. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Esther, ma'am. If you want to ask me anything, you can very well ask me. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for the engaging lecture. Your talk really infused the interest to learn history in us. Thank you once again for joining us on this orientation program. Thanks a lot, yeah, ma'am. Thank you, Esther, ma'am, for giving this uh, opportunity. Thank you, dear it's students. It's pleasure, ma'am. You... Thank you so much, ma'am. I wish you all the very best to students. Do well. Do your studies well. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'am.